so, so sad. You're joking. It's not great. Hiya, welcome to Craftwork. My name's Ruthie and today I'm back with another video and this one's kind of following on from last week's video, which itself was following on from the video before that. And it's all kind of thinking about my personal style. So if you haven't seen it, take a look now. You'll see that I'm reading the book Curated Closet by Anushka Rees and I'm really enjoying it. I haven't got that far with it yet, but it's definitely inspired me to have a little bit of a wardrobe clear out. I tend to do a little bit of a wardrobe clear out quite often, partly because I feel like my style changes a lot, although I definitely feel like I'm understanding a personal style a little bit more. Um, I think the reason my style has changed so much over the years is because I haven't quite found my style yet, but I'm definitely moving towards that and hopefully the book Curated Closet will help. Um, but yeah, this time I'm throwing away quite a lot of handmade clothes. When I say throwing away, I'm first of all gonna be offering them to my friends because I have promised that. Um, and then anything they don't want that is wearable, I will obviously give to a charity shop or find some way of recycling. So don't worry, I'm not checking anything out out, apart from things that are actually like broken. But even then, I'll try and find a way to use them, maybe for scraps or um, for stuffing my fabric poof if all else fails. So yeah, they won't be going completely to waste. But I thought what I might do this time is show you some of the clothes that I'm throwing away because some of it does feel quite hard to do, but I know I'm not going to wear them. I either haven't worn them at all or they're just not my style anymore for whatever reason. So yeah, a lot of handmade clothes. I'm also throwing away a lot of like clothes that I've bought from shops, but that's not as interesting for this channel. So first of all, I want to show you something that I've actually worn quite a lot that I'm gonna get rid of. And that is this Pussy Bow blouse, um, which is a pattern by Sew Over It. And it was quite an early make for me, this one, which is why I can see quite a lot of little mistakes, little corners cut, or just, yeah, not as much neatness. But the main thing that I did wrong, I think, with this is the fabric, whilst really, really pretty, it's not really suitable for this pattern. It's a cotton lawn, I think. I think it might be Liberty print. I'm not really up on my Liberty fabrics, but it looks to me as, as a bit of a Liberty novice um, to be at least inspired by Liberty. The pattern definitely asks for like more drapey fabrics, but it's kind of okay. And as I say, I actually wore it loads when I made it. And it's even starting to wear. I don't know if you can see, but there's like little bits of wear, um, particularly at the shoulder where I think that's more to do with me not quite doing it right. Um, and certainly this fabric obviously frays quite a lot being like a cotton lawn. So um, I didn't have an overlocker when I made this. So I've used a kind of faux overlocker stitch that was on my machine and it's kind of worked okay, um, but not, it's not great. And yeah, I, I made this maybe two years ago, I think. I think it's nice. I think someone might see it and like it, but for me, it's definitely not my style anymore. It's probably time to give it a new lease of life by passing it on to someone else. So that's what I'm hoping I will be able to do with that one. Um, another sew over it, actually there's quite a lot of sew over it in this pile, but don't worry, I'm also keeping a lot of sew over it, it's just because I make so many of their patterns. But yeah, this is the Anderson blouse, and this was the first thing that I made with drapey fabric properly. Again, I wore this loads when I first made it, I was so proud of it, um, I tucked it into like high-waisted trousers and jeans and skirts, and I wore it quite a lot. I didn't even end up finishing it like at the bottom because I knew I would always tuck it in so it didn't feel like it was worth doing that last 
bit at the bottom which is about like putting some ribbon in so I just always tucked it in. The issue obviously is that it unwraps really easily. Um, again it was quite an early make so there are a lot of mistakes where I definitely cut corners or just yeah a bit of a lack of experience um, is certainly showing in this garment. It's just again not my style. And I think it's just maybe a little bit too of that like vintage style that I've realised isn't very me and isn't something I want to wear. It's very flouncy and blousy. I'm definitely more of a shirt person than a blouse person. And yeah, this is just one of those things where I used to love this. It's still perfectly wearable. Someone will look great in it, I hope but I haven't worn it in over a year and I don't still love it. I can't imagine myself wearing it again. So it's time for this one to, to find a new life somewhere else. Finally on the tops front, this is actually kind of more of a wearable toile because, and I'm so over it again, actually. There's only one thing that isn't a sew over it pattern. And again, it's not anything to do with the pattern. And this is the silk cami pattern, um, which, which is great. And I've got a couple of them and I really like them. But this one particularly, it's all about the fabric choice. Um, and the reason that I'm saying this is a wearable twirl is because I realized I needed to do, I made a couple of them and I realized that I needed to do a full bust adjustment and it was the first time I was doing it. So yeah, um, and because it doesn't have any like bust starts or anything like that, I just thought, yeah, let's see what happens if I do a full bust adjustment because basically the first few that I made were like fine everywhere except they were just a little bit too tight on the bust. So that's what I did for this and it fits great now. Um, and now I've got the pattern that's really good. I kept this for a while. I think I wore it maybe once or twice. And I do kind of like it, which is why I'm like giving it away because I feel feel like it deserves to be worn a little bit more. I know the print is a little bit mad. It could definitely be a really nice pajama top, actually. Actually, I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna get rid of this. Hmm. Let me know what you think. Shall I keep it at least as a pyjama top? A very silky, lovely, comfortable pyjama top? Or is it time to let it go? Because yeah, I've only worn it once and I've had it at least a year. I'm not quite sure what the fabric is. I know it's at least very cheap. It's from Mr Fabrics in Lewisham. I think it was like £3 a metre, if that, probably £2 a metre. Let me know what you think in the comments. Should, should I actually keep this? Hmm, might do, I might do. Okay, let's have a break from Sew so Over It then. This is a bateen dress by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's, I love this pattern, but I have made two now that I haven't worn for quite a while. I'm keeping one of them, it's yellow. I'm hoping I will wear it this summer, but if I don't, then it has to go in the charity shop bin, I'm afraid, because I didn't wear it last summer. I made a lot of lovely dresses that were a lot more suitable for summer, I think. It's, again, it's mainly the fabric choice. I plan to make another bateen or two in like a chambray or a cotton or something. But yeah, this is like a viscose that I got from Fabrics Galore. It's really lovely. I absolutely adore the pocket. I like the print, but it was definitely a bit of an impulse buy. Um, and the print isn't very me at all. And yeah, I really like the dress, but as I say, it's just not me, and hopefully it will suit someone else a lot better. It's also, I think the patine pattern for me is a little bit short. Um, I think I would much prefer it if it was a midi length. So yeah, that's my main issue with this, I think. And that was quite a hard decision to get rid of this, because I did wear it quite a lot the first year that I made it, um, which was the year before last, but I haven't worn it much since, so I'm afraid it needs it needs to be worn, it deserves to be worn, um, and I think one of my friends will like this, hopefully, so, yeah. And I'm afraid the last three are so over it again. 
like I say, I pretty much make all their patterns. So some of them aren't going to work for me. So over it, do the best vintage style dress patterns. They're just gorgeous. They look amazing on so many people. But I've realised it's not quite right for me. And I talked about these a little bit in um, my last video or the video before. I can't remember. Um, some of these anyway. This one, which is the 1940s tea dress. My main issue is that it doesn't fit. Um, I definitely sized up uh, because I have found before that sew over it patterns are erring on the slightly smaller side of anything and some of the reviews said that but I think the issue is is that I look at like the size of my hips because that's the biggest part of me and then I go from that size which for a dress like this where it goes out it's not necessary to follow the hip size so much and actually I needed to follow the bust size the most because that was the most difficult part and I never got there. I worked on it, I started making it nearly two years ago now and sort of got to the part where I was about to put the facings on and realised that it was huge. I should have made a twirl, but instead I just went straight for it in this really expensive crepe, really expensive for me anyway, and it was from Sew so Over It as well. It's such a lovely, um, a lovely feel. I adore the colour. I actually love this sort of colour on me. I just love yellow in general. Um, but yeah, I think it was like £12 a metre, which for me is quite a lot I understand that you know that is the quality and also it's an independent business um that is a different type of business to for example some of the places that I go to in Lewisham or Goldhawk Roads that's where I mainly get my fabric from in those places because um it's so cheap <laughs> and very convenient for me but um, yeah, it's not like curated in the same kind of way. So um, I totally understand the cost, but for me it was a little bit expensive and I definitely should have made a twirl in a cheaper fabric, even if it was a wearable twirl first to practice, but stupid me, I didn't. And there's so many mistakes here. There's so many parts where, because I had to like take it apart and redo it, that it's been, the fabric has been like overworked, if that makes sense. Maybe it'll fit someone else better than it does me. Definitely need someone with a bigger bust. Um, but that's not the pattern in general. That's just because I did the wrong size. I didn't do a twirl and for me it was just really hard to fit this dress and as I say I also totally overworked um, and stretched out some of the fabric as well. So bit of a disaster that one, I did wear it in the house, I will never wear it outside the house. Next, oh, this is a really sad one because I again, um, I'd kind of done it badly and then I put it on the back burner for ages. And I think actually I did get to a place where A, it fits really well and I really love the fit. It's maybe a little bit big now, but that's just because I've lost a little bit of weight. But yeah, it was definitely like perfect. But this is the Joan dress by Sew Over It. And it was a bit ambitious to say the least, because it's fully lined. Look, look at that lovely lining. Um, it's with a lovely black crepe from Rolls and Rems. I think everything's from Rolls and Rems apart from, yeah, the ribbon is from Stag and Bow in uh, Forest Hill, which is a really lovely like craft and haberdashery and yeah, a lovely little shop. Yeah, this makes it even sadder that I've wasted this nice trimming. It is wearable and I hope someone else will wear it. So that's why I don't want to take it off. Because also it's hiding a multitude of sins. I think the lining is a really slippery, like proper acetate lining that I wasn't used to using. And I probably didn't do the cutting out very well or very accurately. and. The issue is that the lining is definitely pulling a little bit on the um, on the main fabric, which is just yeah created all sorts of 
issues with the way the whole dress sits and hangs. Um, I did manage, again, I did go back and I did manage to fix it a bit, but not completely. I think I started making this really um, early on in my sewing journey, whatever, and unfortunately it is not good. I do have one more after this that isn't so over it. This is another so over it thing. This is the vintage shirt dress, which I love as a pattern, and I think I will return to that one. I know I said that I won't do like vintage style, but I can definitely see myself, especially if I need like a more conservative dress. Um, I think, I think it is really nice. Or I could make it in like a denim or something, um, and just bring it up to like my style a little bit more. Also, I, I see lots of people making it in like just a plain red, um, particularly like over Christmas, and people made some really lovely ones. So yeah, I think it's a great pattern, looks amazing, and actually I, I think I did quite well considering, again, this was quite ambitious for me at the time, um, and I have worn this a few times, but <laughs> there are some major issues. I think this was the first time I used interfacing, yeah, yeah, and, that, and, I, and I went to make something like this and it was the first time I used interfacing, are you joking? But yeah, this, this happened. So, so sad. Uh, when that happened, I was devastated. I knew I didn't have enough fabric to yeah, do any more, but I was like, it's on the basing, it'll probably be all right. But of course, that's like right at the bottom. So what, it sometimes like flaps open and you can see it, awful. The other thing I did was, was put these buttons on it, which is just mad because they're huge and they're so heavy. Um, and they're not in the right place, and yeah, this was such a, like, this took such a long time to make. Because <laughs> I think anyway, it's quite an involved make. Um, I'm sure I could tackle it a lot better now, but I think this was hugely, hugely ambitious. But I was really proud of it when I finished it, and yeah, as I said, I did wear it a few times. There's even, I don't know why, but there's even a buttonhole at the bottom I can't even work out what that was for yeah I think I probably just chose places to put the buttonholes rather than using where they were supposed to be like on the actual pattern it was also just completely the wrong choice of fabric because it's super um super slippery it's like a oh it's like a polyester tie fabric or something it's a nice color it's a lovely paisley pattern but it's not particularly nice to wear. It's a bit, um, a bit cheap. Yeah, it's definitely not really designed for a dress like this. But yeah, as like my first ever shirt, um, <laughs> thing that I made, um, it probably would have been worth me trying to do it in a easier fabric. I think I did a lot of unpicking with this as well. So yeah, quite sad because it took so long and I was so proud of it, but it's also hilarious how bad it is. Um, so I don't know if anyone will want that because it's quite like, yeah, looking quite bad. And then the last thing I want to show you, I can't put it on because it gives me serious camel toe. Um, but I used to wear this all the time. I don't know if it's like just I've got more fussy with the fit of things or whether... I mean, I think I've lost weight since I last wore this, but it just looks really horrendous. Um, and so I can't show you on properly, although if I find it, I will insert a picture of me wearing it here. Um, yeah, this was one of the first garments I made, and I made it using the um, Rosie Martin's DIY Couture book, which I absolutely love. and especially if you're just starting out in sewing, this could be your Bible. It has really clear instructions on very simple things like inserting a zip, but yeah, it allows you to use your own clothes to just learn how to make things and construct things and actually make some genuinely good things. But I don't think I ever completely followed her instructions. I always just 
like to make a garment I always went off on my own path I'd always like take the um, inspiration from each garment and then go off on my own path which would be fine now but it meant a lot of mistakes when I was just learning to sew obviously because I needed more help than I thought I did but yeah this is a little romper it's in this fabrics that I got for free from a friend um, a friend of a friend who's really lovely and heard that I was sewing and gave me like two suitcases full of fabric. That was amazing and really, really helped me out. The shorts are kind of a culotte style and then the top is just a very, very simple like bodice top with straps. And then there's a sort of exposed zip at the back but actually looking at it I'm quite impressed with how neatly that is sewn in. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. It's got a waistband, although the waistband, again, I don't know if you can see, the waistband is so, like, not matched up. Like, there's the top, there's the top of, of one side, and there's the top of the other side, there and there. I'm really sad to see it go, but I can't wear it. It just gives me really bad camel toe and looks awful. I can't. I'm looking at like old pictures of me wearing it and thinking why does it look different there? Somehow either my posture has changed or my body has changed and it just does not look right. Even though as I say I think I'm skinnier than I was in some of those pictures. It kind of looks like I must have just put on too much weight or maybe I've grown. Maybe my torso has lengthened, that's what it looks like. It's also kind of not my style, it's a little bit too cutesy now but yeah at the time I loved it, I wore it loads, it definitely was my style and it was so perfect for summer. Now it's not my style and it's time to let it go and hopefully, hopefully someone will like it because there aren't as many mistakes. It's definitely still wearable. So hopefully someone will appreciate it, um, probably someone who's just a little bit shorter. So yeah, I hope this was interesting to see some of the clothes that I have worn over the years and loved over the years but now need to let go of but um and also some clothes that are just like complete failures and that i won't ever wear but particularly because i'm aware that i was talking about some of those dresses in other videos and then never showing what they actually look like on um and never yeah showing them in real life so i really wanted to do that and also just to properly say goodbye to them so yeah, hopefully now there should be some space in my wardrobe for some more suitable makes um, and some better makes. So my main aim isn't to create space, but rather just to like get rid of some things that are not reflective of my style anymore. And some things that just aren't reflective of my lifestyle as well. Because some of these things, it's just like, I don't need that many vintage dresses in my wardrobe because even when the occasion calls for it, I still don't want to wear them because they don't feel right and I don't feel comfortable in them. So yeah, that's it from me this week, but I will be back next week with another video. Probably I'm thinking it's time to do another tutorial. Does anyone else feel like their sewing mojo is a little bit off kilter this month? I definitely feel that way, but I'm hoping to get back into it over the next couple of days. So hopefully I'll have something to show you next week. Anyway, let me know if you are doing a similar wardrobe purge um, or planning one and what sort of things you throw out or keep or pass on. I'd love to hear from you, so let me know in the comments below and also if you haven't already, please do subscribe and I will see you again next week. Thanks for watching, bye!